Hey guys, Chris from Pro Beast Audio Insulation, and in today's video, we're going to be replacing the factory singled in in this 2006 Nissan Sentra. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to remove the factory radio. We'll head over to the bench to show you the new radio, including the dash kit and the wiring harness. We'll get everything back here and get it reinstalled in the factory location. Let's get started. Now, Jumping into things, a couple of things to note. We do have the Rockford Fosgate system and 6CD changer down below. Uh, obviously, we actually won't be retaining that 6CD changer. You just really can't nowadays. Um, it won't integrate with the new radio, and so this will become obsolete. Um, but we will be retaining the factory amplifier via this Rockford Fosgate sound system. So uh, without further ado, it's time to kind of jump in and get started here. So first things first, we need to remove a couple of panels here so we can get access to screws top and below the radio, which is gonna allow us to remove it and pop the radio on out. Now I have a Phillips screwdriver as well as a panel tool here. So what we're gonna do is slowly start prying. Just like that. All right, next thing we need to do is remove this lower bezel now. Just like that. It's held on with clips. And what that's going to do is remove the lower screws. Okay, we're gonna disconnect our radio here. Antenna. All right, so with the radio removed, at this point, let's head over to the bench to show you the parts that we're gonna need for our install. All right, so here at the bench, the parts that we're gonna need for the install, first and foremost, is the chosen radio the owner of the vehicle wants us to install. It's this Boss Audio nine inch float mount screen. It's the BCPA9, and essentially it's a singleton chassis, but with a larger screen uh, that disconnects. It's really nice uh, for these type of applications. So you can actually still have your car play with a singleton slot with without any dash modification. Now to accommodate that in the dash, we just need a new bezel. And this comes just like, just, just with this, it's just a trim piece, that's all it is. Because we're gonna be utilizing the factory brackets off the radio. Now this is the Skosh NN1495MTB for 2000 through 2006 Nissan Sentra, as they call it, the metallic color. And finally, for wiring here, we have the Metris 70-7550, and this works for both the Rockford Fosgate and non-Rockford Fosgate sound systems. So, what we're gonna do is grab the harness that came with our radio and our new harness adapters. Today, we're gonna be soldering and heat shrinking our connections, but if you don't know how to solder, you can use buck connectors or crimp caps, which are the most preferred. Just don't twist and tape or use wire nuts as they're not designed for this application. Once we do that, we gotta get our singled-in chassis mounted up in our bracket and get our trim piece installed as well. All right, so what we've done here is we stripped both ends of our harnesses the one with the came with the radio and our harness adapters here. And what we're gonna do is match basically color for color here. And today we're gonna be soldering those connections. Once those connections cool, we'll move our heat shrimp up and over those connections and shrink them down with the heat gun. All right, so we finished our soldering here. Essentially it was just all color for color. Now we left a little uh, blue wire off for a remote turn on. Um, because we have the Rockford Fosgate system, on the smaller harness, you do need to connect your blue-white wire in order to trigger the factory amplifier to turn on. If you don't, you won't get any sound. Everything else just matched up color for color here. Now, these years of Nissan vehicles did not have a ground within the factory harness. So we'll have to manually ground this. And we also grounded our parking brake there because we can on this boss style radio. So this will just, we'll throw a ring terminal on and ground it back behind the radio. 
Um, these are powers for backup cameras and front cameras, which we're not using. And here's the reverse trigger, which again, we're not doing a camera at this time. So, um, but it's out and available and we don't have volume controls under steering wheel. So we don't need this harness. Everything else is used though. So at this point, let's move the heat shrink up and over those connections and we're going to shrink it down with a heat gun. All right, so we finished our wiring harness here. Got it all heat shrunk and tested taped. Really nice and clean. We kept these ends out in case we had a camera down the road. This is our long extended ground wire. And we'll show you where, we're, where we will ground that within the, the dash. And these ends plugged in the factory harnesses. Okay, so with this done and out of the way, we can set this off to the side and now work on our dash kit. All right, we went ahead and finished our dash kit here. So essentially, this bezel clips into that, and we used the same hardware to thread it up, got our new radio bolted up. Now we didn't need the, the, the metal sleeve that came with the radio, so we can set that off to the side. And then this piece just snaps into place, just like that. So looks really nice and clean. At this point, we're done with the dash kit. We're done with the wiring harness. We can start heading back to the car to start getting everything reinstalled. All right, so we're back here in the car. We went ahead and did a ground right there. Just a self-tapper on that bare metal. So that was the ground that we used for our main harness with plenty of length there. So that's all good. And at this point of time, with that in, we also put our mic there. Now it's not a clip style, usually we put it up on the A-pillar, but in this case, because it's just the double-sided tape, we ended up putting it there and then feeding it through the dash out here and we'll bundle the extra back behind the aftermarket radio. So at this point, let's get you back on the tripod and uh, start getting everything reinstalled. All right, so we're ready to start getting everything reinstalled here. Now, let's go ahead and plug in our main harness adapter. Now this third harness adapter is for the 6TD changer that's down below. Um, it becomes obsolete. I mean, we'll hook everything back up this, but this won't plug into anything. Connect our harness here. Connect our Bluetooth mic and connect our antenna adapter. So now we're gonna go ahead and tuck everything back behind the dash, slide it back into place. Okay, let's go ahead and get at least our two top screws in. Okay, let's do a test, make sure everything's working. All right, everything is working. Let's go ahead and finish assembly under the dash here. Okay, that's about it for this install today. If you have any questions on what we did here, post a comment below. If you want any of these parts that we used in this install, we'll link everything in the description of the video. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw. And don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. We'll see you in the next video.